This history of the telephone chronicles the development of the electrical telephone, and includes a brief review of its predecessors. Telephone prehistory Mechanical devices Before the invention of electromagnetic telephones, mechanical acoustic devices existed for transmitting speech and music over a distance greater than that of normal direct speech. The earliest mechanical telephones were based on sound transmission through pipes or other physical media. The acoustic tin can telephone, or lover's phone, has been known for centuries. It connects two diaphragms with a taut string or wire, which transmits sound by mechanical vibrations from one to the other along the wire and not by a modulated electric current. The classic example is the children's toy made by connecting the bottoms of two paper cups, metal cans, or plastic bottles with tautly held string. Among the earliest known experiments were those conducted by the British physicist and polymath Robert Hooke from 1664 to 1685. An acoustic string phone made in 1667 is attributed to him. For a few years in the late 1800s, acoustic telephones were marketed commercially as a niche competitor to the electrical telephone. When the Bell telephone patents expired and many new telephone manufacturers began competing, acoustic telephone makers quickly went out of business. Their maximum range was very limited. An example of one such company was the Pulsion Telephone Supply Company created by Lemuel Mellet in Massachusetts, which designed its version in 1888 and deployed it on railroad right-of-ways. Additionally, speaking tubes have long been common, especially within buildings and aboard ships, and are still in use today. <laughs> Electrical devices. The telephone emerged from the making and successive improvements of the electrical telegraph. In 1804, Spanish polymath and scientist Francisco Salva Campillo constructed an electrochemical telegraph. The first working telegraph was built by the English inventor Francis Ronalds in 1816 and used static electricity. An electromagnetic telegraph was created by Baron Schilling in 1832. Carl Friedrich Gauss and Wilhelm Weber built another electromagnetic telegraph in 1833 in Göttingen. The electrical telegraph was first commercialized by Sir William Fothergill Cook and entered use on the Great Western Railway in England. It ran for 13 miles 21 km from Paddington Station to West Drayton and came into operation on April 9, 1839. Another electrical telegraph was independently developed and patented in the United States in 1837 by Samuel Morse. His assistant, Alfred Vail, developed the Morse code signaling alphabet with Morse. America's first telegram was sent by Morse on January 6, 1838, across two miles three kilometers of wiring. Invention of the telephone Credit for the invention of the electric telephone is frequently disputed, and new controversies over the issue have arisen from time to time. Charles Borsell, Innocenzo Manzetti, Antonio Miucci, Johann Philipp Rees, Alexander Graham Bell, and Elisha Gray, amongst others, have all been credited with the telephone's invention. The early history of the telephone became and still remains a confusing morass of claims and counterclaims, which were not clarified by the huge mass of lawsuits to resolve the patent claims of many individuals and commercial competitors. The Bell and Edison patents, however, were commercially decisive, because they dominated telephone technology and were upheld by court decisions in the United States. The modern telephone is the result of work of many people. Alexander Graham Bell was, however, the first to patent the telephone, as an apparatus for transmitting vocal or other sounds telegraphically. 
Bell has most often been credited as the inventor of the first practical telephone. However, in Germany Johann Philipp Rees is seen as a leading telephone pioneer who stopped only just short of a successful device, and as well the Italian-American inventor and businessman Antonio Meucci has been recognized by the U.S. House of Representatives for his contributory work on the telephone. Several other controversies also surround the question of priority of invention for the telephone. The Elisha Gray and Alexander Bell telephone controversy considers the question of whether Bell and Gray invented the telephone independently and, if not, whether Bell stole the invention from Gray. This controversy is narrower than the broader question of who deserves credit for inventing the telephone, for which there are several claimants. The Canadian Parliamentary Motion on Alexander Graham Bell article reviews the controversial June 2002 United States House of Representatives resolution recognizing Meucci's contributions in the invention of the telephone not for the invention of the telephone. The same resolution was not passed in the U.S. Senate, thus labeling the House resolution as political rhetoric. A subsequent counter-motion was unanimously passed in Canada's Parliament ten days later which declared Bell its inventor. This webpage examines critical aspects of both the parliamentary motion and the congressional resolution. Telephone exchange The main users of the electrical telegraph were post offices, railway stations, the more important governmental centers, ministries, stock exchanges, very few nationally distributed newspapers, the largest internationally important corporations, and wealthy individuals. Telegraph exchanges worked mainly on a store and forward basis. Although telephones devices were in use before the invention of the telephone exchange, their success and economical operation would have been impossible with the schema and structure of the contemporary telegraph systems. Prior to the invention of the telephone switchboard, pairs of telephones were connected directly with each other, which was primarily useful for connecting a home to the owner's business they practically functioned as a primitive intercom. A telephone exchange provides telephone service for a small area, either manually by operators, or automatically by machine switching equipment, it interconnects individual subscriber lines for calls made between them. This made it possible for subscribers to call each other at homes, businesses, or public spaces. These made telephony an available and comfortable communication tool for many purposes, and it gave the impetus for the creation of a new industrial sector. The telephone exchange was an idea of the Hungarian engineer Tivadar Puskas 1844 in 1876, while he was working for Thomas Edison on a telegraph exchange. The first commercial telephone exchange was opened at New Haven, Connecticut, with 21 subscribers on 28 January 1878, in a storefront of the Boardman Building in New Haven, Connecticut. George W. Coy designed and built the world's first switchboard for commercial use. Coy was inspired by Alexander Graham Bell's lecture at the Skiff Opera House in New Haven on 27 April 1877, in Bell's lecture, during which a three-way telephone connection with Hartford and Middletown, Connecticut, was demonstrated. He first discussed the idea of a telephone exchange for the conduct of business and trade. On 3 November 1877, Coy applied for and received a franchise from the Bell Telephone Company for New Haven and Middlesex counties. Coy, along with Herrick P. Frost and Walter Lewis, who provided the capital, established the District Telephone Company of New Haven on 15 January 1878. The switchboard built by Coy was, according to one source, constructed of carriage bolts, handles from teapot lids and bustle wire." According to the company records, all the furnishings of the office, including the switchboard, were worth less than $40. While the switchboard could connect as many as 64 customers, only two conversations could be handled simultaneously and six connections had to be made for each call, the District Telephone Company of New Haven went into operation with only 21 subscribers, who paid $1.50 per month. 
By 21 February 1878, however, when the first telephone directory was published by the company, 50 subscribers were listed. Most of these were businesses and listings such as physicians, the police, and the post office. Only 11 residences were listed, four of which were for persons associated with the company. The New Haven District Telephone Company grew quickly and was reorganized several times in its first years. By 1880, the company had the right from the Bell Telephone Company to service all of Connecticut and western Massachusetts. As it expanded, the company was first renamed Connecticut Telephone, and then Southern New England Telephone in 1882. The site of the first telephone exchange was granted a designation as a National Historic Landmark on 23 April 1965. However it was withdrawn in 1973 in order to demolish the building and construct a parking garage. Early telephone developments The following is a brief summary of the history of the development of the telephone. 1667, Robert Hooke invented a string telephone that conveyed sounds over an extended wire by mechanical vibrations. It was to be termed an «acoustic» or «mechanical» non-electrical «telephone». 1753, Charles Morrison proposes the idea that electricity can be used to transmit messages, by using different wires for each letter. 1844, Innocenzo Manzetti first mooted the idea of a «speaking telegraph» telephone. 1854, Charles Borsell writes a memorandum on the principles of the telephone. See the article, «Transmission électrique de la parole». Illustration, Paris, 26 August 1854 1854, Antonio Meucci demonstrates an electric voice-operated device in New York, it is not clear what kind of device he demonstrated. 1861, Philip Rees constructs the first speech-transmitting telephone, 28 December 1871, Antonio Meucci files a patent caveat, number 3353, a notice of intent to invent, but not a formal patent application at the U.S. Patent Office for a device he named, Sound Telegraph. 1872, Elisha Gray establishes Western Electric Manufacturing Company. 1 July 1875, Bell uses a bi directional gallows telephone that was able to transmit voice-like sounds but not clear speech both the transmitter and the receiver were identical membrane electromagnet instruments 1875 thomas edison experiments with acoustic telegraphy and in november builds an electrodynamic receiver but does not exploit it 1875, Hungarian Tivadar Puskas, the inventor of telephone exchange, arrived in the USA. The 6th of April 1875, Bell's U.S. patent 161,739 transmitters and receivers for electric telegraphs is granted. This uses multiple vibrating steel reeds in make-break circuits, and the concept of multiplexed frequencies. 20 20th of January 1876 Bell signs and notarizes his patent application for the telephone The 11th of February 1876 Elisha Gray designs a liquid transmitter for use with a telephone but does not build one The 7th of March 1876 Bell's US patent number 174465 for the telephone is granted the 10th of March 1876, Bell transmits the sentence, "Mr. Watson, come here. I want to see you." Using a liquid transmitter and an electromagnetic receiver. The 30th of January 1877, Bell's US patent number 186787 is granted for an electromagnetic telephone using permanent magnets, iron diaphragms, and a call bell. 27 27th April 1877, Edison files for a patent on a carbon graphite transmitter. 
patent number 474230 was granted on 3 May 1892, after a 15-year delay because of litigation. Edison was granted patent number 222390 for a carbon granules transmitter in 1879. The 6th of October 1877, The Scientific American publishes the invention from Bell, at that time still without a ringer. The 25th of October 1877, the article in The Scientific American is discussed at the Telegrafenamt in Berlin. The 12th of November 1877, the first commercial telephone company enters telephone business in Friedrichsburg close to Berlin using the Siemens pipe as ringer and telephone devices built by Siemens. 1877, the first experimental telephone exchange in Boston. 1877, first long distance telephone line. 1877, Emil Berliner invented the telephone transmitter. The 28th of January 1878, the first commercial U.S. telephone exchange opened in New Haven, Connecticut. The 15th of June 1878, the first commercial toll line enters operation, connecting Springfield and Holyoke, Massachusetts. 1887, Tivoter Puskas introduced the multiplex switchboard. 1915, first U.S. coast-to-coast -coast long distance telephone call, ceremonially inaugurated by A.G. Bell in New York City and his former assistant Thomas Augustus Watson in San Francisco, California. <laughs> Early commercial instruments Early telephones were technically diverse. Some used liquid transmitters which soon went out of use. Some were dynamic, their diaphragms vibrated a coil of wire in the field of a permanent magnet or vice versa. Such sound-powered telephones survived in small numbers through the 20th century in military and maritime applications where the ability to create its own electrical power was crucial. Most, however, used Edison, Berliner carbon transmitters, which were much louder than the other kinds, even though they required induction coils, actually acting as impedance-matching transformers to make it compatible to the line impedance. The Edison patents kept the Bell monopoly viable into the 20th century, by which time telephone networks were more important than the instrument. Early telephones were locally powered, using a dynamic transmitter or else powering the transmitter with a local battery. One of the jobs of outside plant personnel was to visit each telephone periodically to inspect the battery. During the 20th century, common battery operation came to dominate, powered by talk battery from the telephone exchange over the same wires that carried the voice signals. Late in the century, wireless handsets brought a revival of local battery power. The earliest telephones had only one wire for both transmitting and receiving of audio, and used a ground return path, as was found in telegraph systems. The earliest dynamic telephones also had only one opening for sound, and the user alternately listened and spoke rather, shouted, into the same hole. Sometimes the instruments were operated in pairs at each end, making conversation more convenient but also more expensive. At first, the benefits of a switchboard exchange were not exploited. Instead, telephones were leased in pairs to the subscriber, for example one for his home and one for his shop, and the subscriber had to arrange with telegraph contractors to construct a line between them. Users who wanted the ability to speak to three or four different shops, suppliers etc. would obtain and set up three or four pairs of telephones. Western Union, already using telegraph exchanges, quickly extended the principle to its telephones in New York City and San Francisco, and Bell was not slow in appreciating the potential. Signaling began in an appropriately primitive manner. The user alerted the other end, or the exchange operator, by whistling into the transmitter. Exchange operations soon resulted in telephones being equipped with a bell, first operated over a second wire and later with the same wire using a condenser. 
Telephones connected to the earliest Strouger automatic exchanges had seven wires, one for the knife switch, one for each telegraph key, one for the bell, one for the push button and two for speaking. Rural and other telephones that were not on a common battery exchange had hand-cranked magneto generators to produce an alternating current to ring the bells of other telephones on the line and to alert the exchange operator. In 1877 and 1878, Edison invented and developed the carbon microphone used in all telephones along with the bell receiver until the 1980s. After protracted patent litigation, a federal court ruled in 1892 that Edison and not Emil Berliner was the inventor of the carbon microphone. The carbon microphone was also used in radio broadcasting and public address work through the 1920s. In the 1890s a new smaller style of telephone was introduced, the candlestick telephone, packaged in three parts. The transmitter stood on a stand, known as a candlestick, for its shape, hence the name. When not in use, the receiver hung on a hook with a switch in it, known as a switch hook. Previous telephones required the user to operate a separate switch to connect either the voice or the bell. With the new kind, the user was less likely to leave the phone off the hook. In phones connected to magneto exchanges, the bell, induction coil, battery, and magneto were in a separate bell box called a ringer box. In phones connected to common battery exchanges, the ringer box was installed under a desk, or other out-of-the-way place, since it did not need a battery or magneto. Cradle designs were also used at this time, having a handle with the receiver and transmitter attached, separate from the cradle base that housed the magneto crank and other parts. They were larger than the candlestick and more popular. Disadvantages of single wire operation such as crosstalk and hum from nearby AC power wires had already led to the use of twisted pairs and, for long distance telephones, four wire circuits. Users at the beginning of the 20th century did not place long-distance calls from their own telephones but made an appointment to use a special sound-proofed long-distance telephone booth furnished with the latest technology. Around 1893, the country leading the world in telephones per 100 persons teledensity was Sweden with 0.55 in the whole country but 4 in Stockholm 10,000 out of a total of 27,658 subscribers. This compares with 0.4 in USA for that year. Telephone service in Sweden developed through a variety of institutional forms. The International Bell Telephone Company, a US multinational town and village co-operatives, the General Telephone Company of Stockholm, a Swedish private company, and the Swedish Telegraph Department, part of the Swedish government. Since Stockholm consists of islands, telephone service offered relatively large advantages, but had to use submarine cables extensively. Competition between Bell Telephone and General Telephone, and later between General Telephone and the Swedish Telegraph Department, was intense. In 1893, the US was considerably behind Sweden, New Zealand, Switzerland, and Norway in teledensity. The US became the world leadership in teledensity with the rise of many independent telephone companies after the Bell patents expired in 1893 and 1894. 20th century developments By 1904 over 3 million phones in the U.S. were connected by manual switchboard exchanges. By 1914, the U.S. was the world leader in telephone density and had more than twice the teledensity of Sweden, New Zealand, Switzerland, and Norway. The relatively good performance of the U.S. occurred despite competing telephone networks not interconnecting, what turned out to be the most popular and longest-lasting physical style of telephone was introduced in the early 20th century, including Bell's Model 102 telephone. A carbon granule transmitter and electromagnetic receiver were united in a single molded plastic handle, which when not in use were placed in a cradle in the base unit. The circuit diagram of the Model 102 shows the direct connection of the receiver to the line, while the transmitter was induction coupled, with energy supplied by a local battery. 
The coupling transformer, battery, and ringer were in a separate enclosure from the desk set. The rotary dial in the base interrupted the line current by repeatedly but very briefly disconnecting the line 1 to 10 times for each digit, and the hook switch in the center of the circuit diagram permanently disconnected the line and the transmitter battery while the handset was on the cradle. Starting in the 1930s, the base of the telephone also enclosed its bell and induction coil, obviating the need for a separate ringer box. Power was supplied to each subscriber line by central office batteries instead of the user's local battery which required periodic service. For the next half century, the network behind the telephone grew progressively larger and much more efficient, and after the rotary dial was added the instrument itself changed little until touch-tone signaling started replacing the rotary dial in the 1960s. The history of mobile phones can be traced back to two-way radios permanently installed in vehicles such as taxicabs, police cruisers, railroad trains, and the like. Later versions such as the so-called transportables or bag phones were equipped with a cigarette lighter plug so that they could also be carried, and thus could be used as either mobile two-way radios or as portable phones by being patched into the telephone network. In December 1947, Bell Labs engineers Douglas H. Ring and W. Ray Young proposed hexagonal cell transmissions for mobile phones. Philip T. Porter, also of Bell Labs, proposed that the cell towers be at the corners of the hexagons rather than the centers and have directional antennas that would transmit, receive in three directions see picture at right into three adjacent hexagon cells. The technology did not exist then and the radio frequencies had not yet been allocated. Cellular technology was undeveloped until the 1960s, when Richard H. Frankiel and Joel S. Engel of Bell Labs developed the electronics. On 3 April 1973 Motorola manager Martin Cooper placed a cellular phone call in front of reporters to Dr. Joel S. Engel, head of research at AT&T's Bell Labs. This began the era of the handheld cellular mobile phone. Meanwhile, the 1956 inauguration of the TAT-1 cable and later international direct dialing were important steps in putting together the various continental telephone networks into a global network. Cable television companies began to use their fast developing cable networks, with ducting under the streets of the United Kingdom, in the late 1980s, to provide telephony services in association with major telephone companies. One of the early cable operators in the UK, Cable London, connected its first cable telephone customer in about 1990. Women's usage in the 20th century The telephone was instrumental to modernization. It aided in the development of suburbs and the separation of homes and businesses, but also became a reason for the separation between women occupying the private sphere and men in the public sphere. This would continue to isolate women and the home. Women were regarded as the most frequent users of the telephone. It enabled women to work in the telecommunications sector as receptionists and operators. Their autonomy was celebrated as women were able to develop new relationships and nurture pre-existing ones in their private lives. Social relations are essential in the access and usage of telephone networks. Both historically and currently, women are predominantly responsible for the phone calls that bridge the public and private sphere, such as calls regarding doctors' appointments and meetings. This emphasizes the telephone's impact on the social lives of women in the domestic sphere, reducing both isolation and insecurity. Topic: 21st century developments. Internet Protocol IP telephony, also known as Internet Telephony or Voice over Internet Protocol VoIP, is a disruptive technology that is rapidly gaining ground against traditional telephone network technologies. In Japan and South Korea up to 10% of subscribers switched to this type of telephone service as of January 2005. 
IP telephony uses a broadband Internet service to transmit conversations as data packets. In addition to replacing the traditional plain old telephone service POTS systems, IP telephony also competes with mobile phone networks by offering free or lower cost service via Wi-Fi hotspots. VoIP is also used on private wireless networks which may or may not have a connection to the outside telephone network. See also